Dean Godson, the director of the think tank Policy Exchange, stepped out into the middle of the Horizon Hall at the Rolls-Royce Aerospace Factory to introduce his guest speaker. The nation, he began, before hastily correcting himself. The world thanks you for coming here to give your first keynote speech. The world blinked a little. At least the handful of military personnel and hacks who had made the trip to Bristol to hear Gavin Williamson did. They hadn't realized it was going to be such a massive deal that the whole world would be listening. Granted the timing it coming just over a week after the chemical attack on Sergei and Yulia Scribble in Salisbury gave the event an added edge. But even so, it was still only a Gavin Williamson speech. A man who, before he recommended himself for promotion to defense secretary after the resignation of Michael Fallon late last year, was best known as the keeper of a spider in his role as chief whip and a fireplace salesman. Not that anyone could accuse Williamson of not being a trier. Since his self-promotion he has been tirelessly promoting both himself and the armed forces in a pincer movement designed to end up with him installed inside number 10. There's just one problem with this. He doesn't immediately come across as a particularly impressive figure. More like the dopey Private Pike from Dad's Army than a lantern jawed five-star general. When he mentioned our boys, he could have been talking about himself. He sounded like a not very bright sixth form student who was being forced to read out his unfinished history essay in front of the whole class. Having begun by listing the achievements of the armed services around the globe, Williamson went on to do what every self-respecting new minister on the Meg does. He rubbished the record of his predecessors. Britain had taken its eye off the bull since 2010 by underestimating its enemies. Especially the cyber capability. He didn't elaborate on whether he thought foreign interference had affected either the EU referendum or the US election. That was strictly on a need-to-know basis apparently. There was no point Britain trying to exercise soft power unless it had the hard power to back it up. And Williamson wanted lots and lots of the hard stuff. His global ambition was limitless. In his head he was spending billions and billions on tanks, submarines, nukes, guns and tens of thousands of extra personnel. In reality he was announcing an anthrax vaccination program, a £48 million upgrade to Port on Down and a £4 million shot detection system. It sounded like much ado about very little. The ending of his 20-minute speech seemed to take him by surprise as much as it did everyone else and there was a several second delay before anyone applauded. The questions were understandably all about Salisbury and the Russians. The nation, no, the world, wanted to hear Britain's defense minister make his first formal statement at a time of national crisis. The Russians should go away and shut up, he said. So ya yeah, boo, sucks. Your mum. That was telling them. International diplomacy reduced to a catchphrase on a 70s TV game show. Jim Bowen would be turning in his grave at not having come up with that one. Inside the Kremlin, Vladimir Putin was thrown into a state of profound confusion. No one had ever talked to him like that before. At least not since nursery school. Should he go away and then shut up? Or shut up first and then go away? Or both at the same time, getting steadily quieter as he went away? Decisions, decisions. Were we entering a new Cold War? Let's face it, relations ain't good, are they? Williamson said, a wide grin spreading across his face. Nothing escaped him. He then went into the semantics. We weren't at Cold War level, yet. But things were cool. Exceptionally chilly, even. How exceptionally chilly did it have to get before relations officially became cold? Williamson shrugged. But hey, things weren't all that bad. At least he was enjoying himself. After all, there hadn't been many better times to be a defense secretary in recent years. As for the Russians, they could always just go away 